Good morning, I'm Dan DeRose, or good afternoon, I'm Dan DeRose with 19 News coming to you from our digital desk. We're going to take you live into the Cuyahoga County Court of Common Pleas. We are expecting the sentencing of a former East Cleveland police officer who has pleaded guilty to multiple counts of robbery. And this was a theft in office type situation. In fact, he's uh, pleaded guilty to four counts of robbery and one count of theft in office. This all relates to traffic stops where the officer again has pleaded guilty to in at least three incidents. And there is the former officer. I believe that is Mr. Uh, Alfonso Cole uh, taking to the defendant's table on at least three occasions in 2021 and 2020. Uh, he was on traffic stops and when he would be searching cars as an East Cleveland police officer, he was taking money and guns and even marijuana in some cases out of the suspect's car, not to turn it in as evidence, but he took it for himself. Some very serious charges, again, of which he has pleaded guilty. When they raided his home, they found $14,000 in cash and two firearms from six of the total victims that had been stolen out of their car. Today is sentencing day. Let's take you live into court. Counts one, four, eight, and 14. The victims being count one, Duran, D-E-R-O-N, Trent Wells, in count four, they rid robbery, reduced to robbery, was the victim of that offense was. Uh, yeah. As the judge reads off all the counts here, let's just go through a couple of these cases. It was on June 22nd of 2021 that uh, the former East Cleveland police officer Alfonso Cole uh, was on a traffic stop. The victim was 26 years old. This was on Bender Avenue in East Cleveland. Uh, from what the prosecutor claims, and he has now pleaded guilty to, uh, he took $4,000 marijuana and a gun from that traffic stop. Uh, then we have to go to June 22nd of 2001. This is a second traffic stop, same day, different victim. First victim was a 26 year old. This is an 18 year old. This was on Noble Road. Uh, they asked if there was a gun in the car. Uh, the 18 year old said no. Uh, but his mother had a firearm under the seat and bullets in the glove box in which he took those. Then July of 2021, uh, the uh, traffic stop along with former officer Willie Sims. Uh, this was at a gas station near Euclid Avenue and Superior Road in East Cleveland. Uh, they took $5,000 out of a vehicle and kept it for themselves. The victim in that case reported it to the East Cleveland Department and to the Cuyahoga County Sheriff's Department. That's when the ball got rolling. Only when that victim had $5,000 stolen from their vehicle and reported it to the Cuyahoga County Sheriff's Department did things start to get rolling in an investigation. Again, let's take you live into the sentencing. Seventh, the court accepted the uh, agreed sentence of 30 months total between the two dockets, two and a half years in prison. The, the subject of post release control parole at the discretion of the parole department. The all right, the court is a receipt of pre-sentence investigations that were ordered. In the first docket, 674257, uh, Mr. Stephen Nagy began sequentially the investigation by reporting to East Cleveland Detective Bureau that the previous month on August 4th, 2021, he had robbed, he was robbed at the gas station, the Sunoco gas station at 15237 Euclid. Excuse me, Your Honor. I apologize for interrupting. Is um, that the other offender? Yes, there are. There is a second co defendant who will not be sentenced at this time. Uh, that victim pertains to that. Defendant. Okay. And Your Honor? Yes. May we have a sidebar, please? Yes. Thank you. 
Uh, the, the attorneys here, both for the state and the defense, asking for a quick meeting with the judge. Uh, the reason there's uh, confusion here is that in the stop that occurred um, on at the gas station in East Cleveland, I want to make sure I get my dates right here because there are so many of these. Uh, this was at the uh, on July 8th, 2021. Uh, Willie Sims, who is a, again another former officer accused of stealing uh, from victims when they would pull them over in East Cleveland. Uh, they're a little concerned that judge is uh, going ahead and issuing a sentence on that one because Willie Sims has not uh, been uh, found guilty at this point and is not being sentenced today. You heard the judge talk about an agreed upon sentence that was for entering into the plea deal. Uh, Alonzo Cole, Alfonso Cole uh, decided to forego a trial, which it looks like the prosecutor uh, has uh, she's got a monitor loaded up and it would be interesting if they were able to find body cam video from these incidents uh, showing the officers getting into the vehicles on traffic stops in one case finding four thousand dollars cash in another case five thousand dollars cash and then keeping it for themselves never reporting it in as evidence the the court sometimes goes from a police perspective, looking at what's kicked in an investigation, what started it off, who, who came first and alerted the police or whatever the investigating authority was of, of that something was amiss at the police department. That I, I'm going to skip that part of it. I'm going to go right into the uh, uh, the facts relevant here. On July 12, 21, at 6.47 p.m., a Mr. Wells was pulled over for a traffic stop on Noble Road in East Cleveland. Uh, he claims he did not commit any traffic in infraction. And uh, the officer took his driver's license, told him it was suspended, and asked him to step out of, of the car. He was placed in handcuffs, placed in the police car, then went back into Wells' vehicle and asked the passenger, uh, Wells' 10-year-old sister, to exit the vehicle and stand at the side. She was able to see the, the officer search the vehicle, take bullets from the glove box and search under the seat. Uh, she was unable to see what, if anything, was taken from under the seat. Then the officer returned to Wells, whispered in his ear, you're not getting the gun back. Uh, well said he was confused as to what the officer was talking about. The, uh, the officer told him that possession of a gun was a 10 year felony and he was going to jail. He then told him the vehicle would be towed and someone would have to pick up his sister. The officer then printed a tinted window citation, told him he was let him go with that alone and Wells, the victim, stated he was still confused as to how he went from going to a jail on a ticket uh, to driving off with his sister. After leaving the scene, uh, Wells called his mother, told her what happened. Uh, the mother spoke with the sheriff's office, uh, and she said the gun was her gun, and she was the one who kept it in the vehicle, apparently. The, she called the police, the East Cleveland Police Department in an effort to uh, apparently get her gun returned. Subsequently, a search warrant was issued for the residents at, on Mount Carmel Road and they recovered, the sheriffs recovered a, uh, a Glock handgun uh, 
with magazine holster, silver iPhone with screen, a series of 45 caliber bullets, miscellaneous notes, notepad, 490 in currency, suspected marijuana in a bag, a Wyndham rifle, black scale, a portion of a Smith & Wesson handgun, 13 9mm rounds, an East Cleveland Citation book, uh, camera, shotgun, magazine for uh, 9mm caliber weapons, magazine containing 27 40 caliber bullets, a shirt with police patches, copy the warrant was left with the resident, Christian Martin, a girlfriend of defendant Alfonso Cole. On September 9, 2021, uh, the a sergeant at East Cleveland Police was informed uh, that Martez Brown had come to the East Cleveland Police Station to make a complaint about a traffic stop conducted by Officer Willie Sims and Officer Alonzo Cole. The Brown reported that Sims and Cole stopped him for a window tint violation. He had a large sum of money, approximately 9000 in the vehicle at the time of the stop. After the stop was completed, Brown realized that a large sum of money was missing, four to 5000 of that sum. He stated he had a large amount of money on him as he was on his way to Calhoun Funeral Home to pay his grandmother's funeral bill. Uh, he produced a withdrawal receipt for the 9000 uh, close in time to the traffic stop. The police checked the funeral home, uh, however, and said that the the operators of the home said the funeral was covered by insurance and uh, and a trust fund. The Ohio set with the state of Ohio. The so there was no bill in essence to pay. The, the East Cleveland Police in their internal investigation attempted to review the body camera footage of the officer's cameras uh, as they are to be loaded, uploaded daily, but couldn't find, uh, but could only find Sims showing, uh, tearing off a citation from the printer in a patrol car, placing the Brown's driver's license on top of and walking to Brown. Right, the next day, July 10th, Officer Sims was read his Miranda rights at the uh, Detective Bureau. He asked for his union rep. He asked to use the restroom and disappeared. Uh, without being confronted about that particular uh, alleged robbery that we just discussed, he began to talk about it, but the guy accusing him of taking the money when they hadn't accused him yet or mentioned it.
All right, Sims went on to uh, suggest during this rather complicated investigation as it went on that uh, he had never worked with Officer Cole before and was basically following instructions. and that his body camera must have been malfunctioning. Uh, and he told Officer Cole to turn his on, but Cole must not have done so. Sims went on to give a description, his description of the events of that robbery at the gas station in question. And that uh, the money last he saw of it was put on the uh, Police cruiser's first council, front council, why uh, Sims searching, continued searching the vehicle. But they decided Cole took the handcuffs off Brown and gave him his money back. When, when the victim complained he didn't get all his money back, uh, Sim says Cole did give it to him, gave him the rest. Sim said he asked Cole what he was doing and when it was clear he didn't return all the money to him and Cole replied, this is what I do, end quote. And they drove away. Sims claimed to be angry as a return to the police station. Uh, they pulled over another Volkswagen under pretext of tinted windows. Again, the body cameras weren't working properly. Sim's story was. Sims had $1,220 on him and he claimed he was carrying that to pay for his apartment rent the following day. Cash money he had apparently earned from side jobs. When asked about his vehicle, Sims reported it was gone and he had given it to a girlfriend to, or, or she, she had taken it with her spare key to go to Cedar Point. Sims pointed out other corrupt activities with other officers other than the defendant, co-defendant, here today.
but not in a confession sense and in a, in a sense to uh, excuse his actions or to, to uh, reset resend the hounds in another direction apparently. He re reiterated he always had his body camera on Sims did that that people were lying about him not having on him since the accusations were put out in the media. <laughs> Our victim, Deontay, reports, reported to the sheriffs that on June 22, 21, he had been stopped for a traffic offense by East Cleveland police officer Cole. He didn't have a license and uh, asked, then asked him if he had marijuana in the vehicle and uh, said he did, 2.5 grams. Ray said he did and $4,000 in cash. Uh, he also had a Father's Day gift from his daughter in a blue bag. Uh, he says Officer Cole emptied the items in the gift bag, took Ray's money and marijuana, put it in the gift bag, carried it back to the police vehicle. Took other monies on him placed him in the back of the car, searched Ray's trunk, issued him a traffic ticket and told him he was free to go. He said he was confused because he thought he was about to go to jail and then he was told free to go. Uh, he looked at the ticket. The items taken from the officer were not listed on the ticket. told family members about the incident, was told to call the police. Uh, he said he's a mobile mechanic and he had between 4000 and 4200 in cash on him because he was on his way to purchase a work van. The marijuana was for personal use. The police investigated a complaint uh, given to them from a neighbor who said another resident had complained about being stopped for traffic violation by Officer Cole uh, near Euclid Marlowe's Avenue, M-A-R-L-O-E-S. He was issued a ticket as well as a driving under suspension and this $850 of currency was taken along with a plastic bag of marijuana from him. Uh, the neighbor urged him making a formal complaint, but he was reluctant to do so because uh, the, the victim here, Nelson, said he was on parole and was feared being sent back to prison for violation for the cash and marijuana. So the restitution amounts for this case in the, in the four robberies uh, are five thousand for for Merez Brown, four thousand eight fifty for Duran Wells, four thousand eight fifty to Deontay Ray, and that same amount re restitution for uh, Eugene Nelson. Uh, is that a combined restitution in those amounts? Yes, for those last three victims. Okay, so the PO just has it okay. written wrong, but it's a combined, that's what I thought. Okay. All right. Now, other than these two offenses, of course, the defendant has no prior record. Pre-sentence report indicates he's 35, lives in the inner city in Cleveland, resides with his girlfriend and their children. Uh, he went to Washington High School in Maslin, 
through the 11th grade, never been suspended, obtained his GED in 2012 at Tri-C. He was raised by his mother in foster care since from age 12, in group, group homes since age 15. His parents were married and three siblings. He has a very good relationship with his family. He receives strong support. Uh, he and his siblings were removed from, in childhood from their family home as a result of physical abuse by his mother's boyfriend. He has no alcohol or substance abuse history. He's not a, a drinker, so to speak, or a uh, <coughs> drug user. Although uh, he has a history or a drug test on July 13th at by the probation department it showed uh, mar alcohol but negative for marijuana and all other drugs and the second test given to him on August 8th was negative for all drugs uh, he wasn't tested for alcohol on that day I don't know why they tested him for alcohol on that particular day they don't normally test for alcohol to my knowledge unless there's a reason but Maybe maybe they have different protocols. I'm not sure. But there's no indication of intoxication. There's just alcohol in his system. Okay. All right. So we outlined in particular the the pleas of August 7th. We know what the sentence is going to be because it's agreed on negotiated sentence between the state and the defendant. Now I'll hear from the state, then we'll hear from the defense. Now the state, I understand it's a statement to make. Go right ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court. Opposing counsel. Can you introduce yourself for the record, too, please? Yes, I'm Assistant Prosecuting Attorney Mary Grace Takmenko on behalf of the state of Ohio. With me, with me at the table. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Your Honor. Andy Rogowski, Assistant Prosecuting Attorney for the state of Ohio. Great. Thank you. Go ahead. Yes, we are from the Economic Crime and Public Corruption Unit. Um, Your Honor, just one technicality, uh, one thing you mentioned early, I want to make sure I don't sure, forget sure. it, uh, for potential consequences when it comes to post-release control. Uh, on these offenses, I believe you mentioned something about discretionary. Yes. For the felonies of the third degree that he pled to, uh, the robberies, there will be a mandatory minimum one year of post-release control up to a uh, maximum of three years. Okay, did, did I state it, or did you state it correctly at the time of the play? That's more important. We did, yes, Your Honor. So is that understood? understood? Uh, Your Honor, it's that? understood about defense. Okay. It's understood, yes. All right, but all right, I apologize for the mistake. Go ahead. All right. Your Honor, may I uh, move about the courtroom? Please, go ahead. Please. Thank you, Your Honor. So some years ago, the city of East Cleveland entrusted defendant Alfonso Cole with a gun, with a badge, a uniform, a police cruiser, and with the authority to protect and serve its residents. Now, Your Honor, the residents in East Cleveland, <coughs> they deserve the protection and the service of every member of that police force. But Alfonso Cole and his co-defendant, Willie Sims, who will be sentenced on Thursday, they did just the opposite. They use their authority, they use their power for their own profit and their own gain. So I know you reviewed the pre-sentence report, Your Honor. Uh, those were summaries of some of the police reports involved here. Mr. Cole was involved in four incidents. Just briefly, Your Honor, they're dating back to September of 2020. The first robbery we're going to talk about, like you said, these are all traffic stops. In this occasion, he ordered the mail out. It was a uh, 
traffic violation for a moving violation, failure to stop at a flashing light. He asked the male to get out of the car, said he smelled marijuana, patted him down, went in his pockets, found $850, also found a bag of marijuana in the car. He seized those two things, didn't file a police report, just kept them, cited him, and sent him on his way. Well, how did they ever learn about it? How did, how did the investigation come up with that fellow? He reported it, uh, and you did touch on this in the pre-sentence report. This male reported it to a neighbor who was an East Cleveland police sergeant okay. after the fact, actually significantly after the fact. The second robbery uh, that we are charged here, we have charged here, we're fast forwarding a bit in June of 2021. This was the 18 year old male at the traffic stop who's sitting with his 10 year old sister. They're driving their mom's car. Now mom had a firearm under the seat that the 18 year old uh, said he didn't know about. Regardless, he was stopped for a window tent. Uh, Cole approached him, told him the car smelled like marijuana, got both occupants out of the car, went into the car and found this Taurus uh, brand gun under the seat. He sees the firearm, never wrote a report about it, never uh, cited or arrested the 18 year old because in theory an 18 year old cannot have a firearm. He just told them you're not getting the gun back, sent them all on their way with a window tint citation. The third incident, same day, if you'll notice this is about an hour and a half after the stop of that 18 year old. Same day, Cole stops another adult male, another window tint violation. Uh, again, saying he smells marijuana, asks the occupant. There was, so he took the occupant out, patted him down. This was the male that had $4,000 on him. He also had a Glock handgun in his back seat. Uh, $4,000 is, yes, a lot of money. This man is a mobile mechanic. Uh, he was on his way to purchase a new work van with that money. Once again, no police report filed, uh, no arrest made, no improper handling charge. Seized the money, didn't document it, seized the gun, sent the driver on his way. Finally, the fourth incident we've charged, to which he's pled, this was the uh, incident where he was with his co-defendant. So this is the incident for which we are asking for a joint and several liability for the restitution because they were both there. Another traffic stop, male driver, male occupant. When the police officers walk up on the car, <coughs> they see an open container. They get the males out. They uh, empty the driver's pockets. Yes, he has $9,000 in his pockets. They get him out of the car, search the car, they give him back approximately $4,000. Uh, this male, yes, he makes some statements about that was money that was earmarked for his grandmother's funeral. Uh, well, that has not been confirmed. He did provide a receipt from that day, right before this, that he went to the bank and withdrew that money, that $9,000. So he is claiming he, is, he was returned $4,000 of it. He is still out $5,000. Cited for window tent. Again, uh, no other charges, no other documentation of the seizure of this money set on his way. Well, this man, he went immediately to East Cleveland Police Department to report this. He spoke with officers there, and that's when the investigation started. So a few days later, with probable cause, a search warrant is executed at Cole's residence. You did mention this, Your Honor. Now, at his residence, that Taurus that was under that 18-year-old seat was located, that stolen Taurus firearm. They also located the stolen Glock firearm that was taken from the car of the man who has $4,000 in his pocket. Serial numbers matched, and each trace on the Glock firearm matched the registered owner. As you also mentioned, other firearms were seized from the house, rifle, shotgun, a Ruger handgun, $490, and a bag of suspected marijuana. Uh, of note, you mentioned this as well, Your Honor, but it is 
significant that they were police officers had body cams during this time. Their policy was that in any contact with citizens, those body cams should be on and running. Uh, if there's some sort of malfunction, yeah, that should be reported, they should be fixed, they should be given other body cams. Officer Cole's body cam was not on conveniently for any of these stops. So we're, fasting, we're uh, pressing fast forward a bit here. This was the second case, what we're here for today. There was a second case that happened after that first case was indicted, after the robbery case was already in motion. Pre-trials had happened. Mr. Cole had been here knew that he was under indictment for that robbery case. Just a few months ago, police are surveilling a gas station in Cleveland's east side in the 5th District, and they see Mr. Cole walking with a firearm exposed uh, in his hip. You can see it through his t-shirt and uh, under his t-shirt. So they stopped him. There's a, a sign that there's no firearms allowed inside this gas station and they did seize a lock 9mm handgun at that time. So he did plead guilty as well in the second case that happened while the first case was pending. So Your Honor, uh, just a few final thoughts. It's worth it to mention that today is a significant day in our history, and it's a day of remembrance for September 11th, 2001. And it's a day where we remember the first responders who rushed to the scene, rose to the occasion, and obviously some made the ultimate sacrifice. And while my colleagues and I were not in police academy with Mr. Cole, and we weren't sitting with his training officer and he, when he was learning how to be a police officer, we know that police officers are taught core values, honor, integrity, courtesy, professionalism and respect. Those are the core values that you are taught as a police officer. And now more than ever, police officers, good police officers are out in our city and in our county trying to earn back the public trust. And defendant Alfonso Cole and his co-defendant Willie Sims shattered the public trust by these incidents and what they did, Your Honor. So we would ask that you do adopt the prison sentence that has been recommended we think it is appropriate here, based on all the facts of these cases, based on his role. And, and what was the agreed on sentence reached by the parties here? The we have recommended an agreed 30 month sentence, Your Honor. And? I'm sorry? And? Uh, and I, there were some other conditions on this offer. Um, we have agreed restitution for all of the thefts that happened here. Um, obviously, no contact with any of the named victims. We also uh, significantly want, and it's, this will uh, naturally happen after the sentencing journal entry, uh, is that there will be a permanent surrender of his Ohio Police Officer Training Academy certificate. Yes, the OPADA certificate. Um, and in that second case of the forfeiture of the firearm to the Ohio Department of Public Safety. All right, any, tell us the status of the victims. I would normally call the victims, give them an opportunity to speak here. They're not here today. Any explanation or knowledge of why? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Deontay Ray recently lost his seven-year-old in a tragic car accident that happened last weekend at West 58th and Denison. Uh, that did gain some news, and um, so he and his family are grieving. Uh, he asked if there would be any sort of restitution hearing down the road. He would be willing to participate, um, but right now he, he's dealing with a family tragedy. Uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Wells, the 18-year-old, uh, and his mother talked about coming down here uh, they were, of course, n worried and nervous about uh, the implications of speaking uh, in, in such a situation uh, against a former police officer. Uh, they've been in contact with me. I've been speaking with them. 
they had the firearm, the Taurus firearm seized, no actual money in that case. So they would just ask that that would be returned to them. Martez Brown. Is still in existence, the firearm? I don't want to order return it. It doesn't exist anymore. It's systematically destroyed. I just wonder what the status of that particular gun is. My understanding is that that and the Glock firearms are in evidence right now in property. So what could be returned if that's in property? The Taurus firearm and the two Glock firearms. Okay, go ahead. All right, you're not destroyed. Great. Thank you. Mr. Nelson was not present today. He was the first person I talked about. $850. He requests restitution for that amount. As you mentioned in the pre-sentence report, he was on parole at the time that he was stopped, and so he felt very conflicted about reporting this to police, although he eventually did. He did have a bag of marijuana with him when he was stopped. One of these victims didn't go voluntarily to the police department, but the police department went to them after he complained to a neighbor? His neighbor was an East Cleveland police sergeant, so he reported it to him. So the sergeant, if I understand the sequence, the sergeant learns about this investigation going on regarding the other robberies, informs the East Cleveland investigating officers about Mr. Nelson's situation, and they went to him. Yes. In other words, he didn't go to them because of these reasons of parole or whatever he was concerned about. It's my understanding that he actually did reach out to a sergeant initially, but that no actual report was filed. He had just verbally told them. Looking at how it came about that they learned from him of the event, he told the neighbor who was a police officer with some rank, and that officer later, he told this officer later, and then at that office, there was not a delay you're suggesting. So when this investigation began, he told the investigators of this neighbor of his who claimed to have been robbed. Yes. Okay. All right. There's some importance to it because it's significant in some fashion. Well, it was chronologically the first event, but it was not found out about, yes, until after the last. So the last victim is Martez Brown. He was not able to be here today. He, again, is requesting the restitution for the $5,000 that was taken from him at the time of the traffic stop. So the combined between Wells, Ray, and Nelson is $4,850. So there's $4,000 between those other two and $5,000 from Murray Brown, who claimed he had nine, and only four was returned back to him. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Did they express any opinion about sentencing jail-wise? They believed that the agreed recommended sentence was fair and just, and that in a situation such as this where someone is purely using his job for his own profit, that prison is appropriate. Okay. Thank you. All right. Mr. Sims. Thank you. Your Honor, may it please the Court, certainly we are not here to defend anything. My client pled guilty to the charges as indicated on the record, as indicated by the prosecutor, and you accepted those guilty pleas. He's taken responsibility for the harm and the problems and the trouble he has caused himself, his family, his community, and his profession. He's 35 years old, Judge, and you read earlier all the things about his life that were good, that he had no prior record, was a police officer for about a year and a half in the city of East Cleveland, had no apparent drug or alcohol issues. You know, he got his GED. So he was doing all the right things. However, and it is clear, he made some very, very poor, horrible, and bad decisions that has cost him dearly. It cost him his job. It cost him his reputation. 
It brought shame upon the other good officers in the community, the East Cleveland Police Department. Uh, he's very remorseful and sorry for what he has got himself into, Judge. Uh, he can't find a job anywhere. He lost his certification. He will never be in law enforcement again. And he understands, Judge, he's going to be punished for his offenses by doing 30 months in the penitentiary. He, 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 that is uh, understandable. We get it. He gets it, Judge. Uh, if he could do, do his life over again, Judge, he'd do things differently, but we can't. We can only accept responsibility for the mistakes we have caused and the harm we have caused, accept our punishment, and attempt to move forward in life. Uh, I will say, Judge, uh, because he is a former law enforcement officer and going to the penitentiary, I'd like the court to consider uh, uh, making arrangements with Bureau of Prisons to have him uh, put in a situation, a special situation, a classification, or isolation, or whatever the term is, for former police officers to protect them while they serve their time in the penitentiary. We're requesting the court's uh, indulgence and the court's influence and the court's power to make that happen. Uh, also, Judge, regarding restitution, as we sit here, we heard restitution, uh, and we have we are filed a, a document, Your Honor, opposing that, and we're asking this court to consider that document, Judge, as my client has no ability at all to pay any restitution, Judge. He has no job, he has no income, uh, he's going to prison, Judge. He doesn't have the ability to pay it, and we think under the, the Ohio law, this court should consider the fact of not imposing that order upon him. And we're asking this court to, uh, again, accept the agreed 30-month sentence. He's very sorry for what he has done, for the harm he has caused. He's willing to accept his punishment at this point, Judge. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Cole, anything you'd like to say, sir? Please. <clears throat> uh, just how long I want to apologize to the victims. Yeah, would, Mr. Chen, would you turn on that microphone, please? I'm sorry. Hit that green cool. button there down the bottom. I want to make sure everybody hears it. Hit what button, Judge? Uh, on the bottom, there's a, the, the lower part. You just hit, hit, there you go. It's on, it's on. Right. It's on, Judge. Okay, thank you. Um, I just want to apologize to the victims. And I just want to say, um, well, why don't you hold that microphone, sir? That would, just hold it to pop your hand and then. Just hold, hold it and see. There you go. Take your time. Go ahead and be here. We're going to go wherever you say. I want to apologize to the victims. Just, um, and, um, of course, like I said, like Mr. Simmons said, I made a series of bad decisions. And since then, uh, I lost a lot of family members, uh, a lot of friends, my career. It's pretty much. All right. And uh, moving forward, I do want to learn from this, and I do the set on top. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, you can be seated. All right, the court is going to pass sentence at this point. I thank all the parties for their statements and their uh, efforts here to achieve justice between the state, the defense, the victims, the investigating agencies. Uh, the court is going to attempt to uh, pass a sentence here that would comply with the, all the purposes and principles under Ohio law, which is to protect the public from future crime by the offender and others, and use the minimum sanctions that, that would accomplish these purposes. Uh, with, without imposing an unnecessary burden on the state or government. Uh, the, and we're keeping in mind the need for uh, incapacitation, deterrence, rehabilitation, and restitution. So taking all those factors into consideration, I look at the seriousness of the conduct. The, uh, is it more serious? Yes. 
the injuries imposed upon the victims themselves, these individuals, outlined the four individuals in particular, and the citizens of the community are extreme. So they're extremely serious. That's just more serious. The victims are robbed by police officers. I mean, that's a shocking event to people. It's a shocking event to those individuals. Just start with the individuals. You've got the kid in the car. You've got the 18-year-old. And they're being robbed by a police officer. That isn't something you shake off easily. It is going to affect them for a long time. Not to mention the other victims. The same, just more so the younger, I suppose, the more devastating it is. But it also damages everybody in the community. Let's just work outward, you know, from their friends and neighbors to know they live in East Cleveland or travel in East Cleveland. And you could be robbed not only by the robbers. Things are tough in East Cleveland. It was at one time we had the highest rate of being a victim of violence between Chicago and New York. At one point, somebody scheduled that or rated that statistically. I don't know if that's still the case. It was a few decades ago. It doesn't seem to have gotten much better, though. I wouldn't be surprised if it's still up there. But so the point of that is you're afraid to be in the community if you're walking the streets or an innocent victim or working there, living there. And then to find out that the office that's to protect you is also conducting robberies would be willing to do an armed holdup. The policeman's armed. That's an armed holdup in layman's terms. That's pretty scary. That shakes you right to your foundation. I think the police, the people you call for help, the last resort, they themselves rob people in that city. It also robs people their confidence in the city, the sense of safety they have in their community, and helps undermine an already very tough situation for those good citizens still living in East Cleveland, trying to get by, can't afford to move out. They live there. They love their city or just can't afford to go. They don't have the wherewithal to move up the hill into a mansion. They're in their house, and that's where they're at, and they can't go anywhere. So they're, by choice or economically, pressured to be there and to find out they're not even safe in their own police department. That's a scary situation. And what about the police officers there in East Cleveland and elsewhere across the community and state who have dedicated their professional lives to protecting the safety of the community, putting their lives on the line, living up to their oath, and be willing to die to protect the safety of the community. And then to find out that their whole reputation is undermined by individuals who are actually going out doing robberies themselves of vulnerable people. You know, you could imagine circumstances as to how vulnerable each person was, but I can't think of any circumstance with the 18-year-old driving his 10-year-old little sister around and inviting a crime. Not that the others did either, but it's astonishing, really. It's an astonishingly bold action to think that they could get away with it. If any police officer thought they could get away with this for long, and did for some considerable time, apparently, is an astonishing event to me. So the victims go on. And so the whole system is victimized. Now, I look at your life. Otherwise, it's a, you know, you may well have gone into police work with honorable intentions. And I see no prior history of crime. You rose above a tough upbringing, a tough circumstances of life. You weren't born with a silver spoon in your hand or your mouth. You had to earn it. You worked hard. You had good efforts and no troubles before this. So this is an astonishing error in judgment that has sharp repercussions. 
I, there, there was a public official here, now deceased, who, uh, who, who many years ago, 40, 50 years ago, said it, he, he explained why prosecutions of police officers were so different. And, he, and why a police officer, when a police officer committed a crime, was so different than, than an ordinary person who committed a crime. Because the, the ordinary burglar or robber doesn't take an oath to the Almighty and, and accept the responsibility and, the, and the, uh, the responsibility that the community gives that individual and the authority that the individual gives them, give, is given and the respect that good citizens give to that individual. Uh, the ordinary criminal doesn't have that oath or have that badge and isn't given that public gun to protect them, the community. So when an individual who is a police officer has taken that oath, he in essence is in a, in a criminal category of his own. He in effect is a traitor to the system. He's far worse than your normal burglar, or robber, or, or criminal, and deserves a higher sentence than in, in a harsher treatment the, than your ordinary criminal who didn't take an oath. He's just a car thief or a robber or a burglar or whatever he is. But when a police officer takes that role, he definitely deserves that sentence. Now the parties have reached a reasonable sentence, the court agrees with, uh, that uh, spares uh, the, the victims and the, the risk involved in any trial and adequately will protect the, the public. So I accept the sentence of the 30 months total given uh, with restitution and the fines are at the discretion of the court. The court will give the high maximum fines to the robbery victims the, uh, in, in this case. So we're going to impose a 30 month total sentence as free. We'll read as follows. The, uh, the It'll be 30 months. Uh, now, uh, on the felony three, we have groupings. Uh, what is the grouping closest to uh, two and a half years? Is there a 30 month? Is that one of the agreed grouping? Okay, categories. All right. Be 30 months on count one, four, eight, and 14. Uh, 30 months each. And on count 17, the theft in office, all in docket 674257, will be 30 months, two and a half years in prison. Uh, the parole time being minimum one and uh, maximum, is it maximum two? Um, Your Honor, I just want to just uh, make sure for count 17, felony of the fifth degree. That, that I haven't sentenced yet. That's just going to be okay, six I'm months. Uh, could, uh, okay. All sentences will be run concurrent. But and then I'll run it concurrent with the next docket. The post-release control is, is... Was it one to two? It's a minimum mandatory one. of one year up to three years. Up to two? Up to three years three, on the Up to three. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. So the... These sentences will have a one to one to three because of uh, the robberies. Yes. Man. Uh, wait, wait till I conclude. Then I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Then I'll let you do well, it, your objection. What, what you might say. I'm saying that he's he's got 30 months okay. on each of the robberies, six months on the theft in office to run concurrent to one another, and to run concurrent with the sentences in six a two. 423, which will be for having weapon one or disability, uh, 30 months, CCW, 12 months, to run concurrent to one another and to run concurrent with the other sentence. The court is not going to impose any fines in docket 682-423. We'll impose court costs in both cases. The uh, court costs can be worked off committee work service in prison at the discretion of the warden. Restitution uh, is ordered for 5000 and, and uh, 4850 for a total of uh, $9,850. Uh, 
uh, the fines in the four robbery cases in 674257 docket are to be $10,000 each, the maximum fine. So he's fined $40,000. In addition, he has $9,850 in restitution plus costs. Now, I will entertain your uh, uh, statements in a moment. Oh, I'm sorry. They, uh, now, the fines can be worked off also by community work service approved by the warden. So he's got two and a half years that he can work at the warden's discretion in separate jobs earning community work service. The prison system has set up such operations, and but they're completely in the discretion of the warden's office to assign a job, and of course the defendant has to work satisfactory at the job if assigned in order to keep getting their credit. The, the court gives authorization to the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and their ward of, of their each institution to determine what the value of their uh, community work service is, and they set rates, like an hourly rate to work they approve. Okay, uh, he needs to be given credit for time served. Let me finish that. What do we have? What, what jail time do we have already uh, in the computer? So he must have had some arrest time here. Yes. Okay. Not like we do we look it up yet? Yeah. Um, three days, um, six, four, seven, two, five, seven. Okay. So then he was rearrested on a new one. How many days did he do there? We have one day. So how many total is that? Total of four days. Between the two? Mm -hmm. uh, how many? Four. Four days, okay. Counsel? Yeah, Your Honor, I think... You start with really the four good. days. Any any correction? I'd like to get that out no, of the way I, before I, I, I don't have any And I have one more issue to cover. I'm sorry. All right. The Regarding the defendant's transfer, the, the court finds merit in the... Uh, defense argument that the defendant will be endangered in the, if treated as regular prison in the uh, Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Correction. The court has seen from past experience where former police officers have been assaulted, endangered, uh, and severely so in the Ohio Department. And, and sometimes it's just an, uh, that they're unaware they weren't properly informed. And sometimes it's in a period of receipt where they're evaluating the prisoner. They usually take them to graft and evaluate them. And uh, it takes a while to actually confirm that somebody was a, actually a police officer in the past. So what the court is going to order, he's going to uh, describe in a journal entry here to the Department of Rehabilitation that the defendant should be segregated from all normal uh, prisoners and put in a special selective uh, in prison environment that uh, protects him from attack by other prisoners. The, and we will hold the defendant in the county jail until we learn uh, from the Department of Rehabilitation or the reception center that they are aware of this fact and will handle his transfer accordingly. So he, he will be kept in, the, in that, that advice also goes to the county sheriff. So the county sheriff will segregate him from other prisoners until he can be transported safely uh, to the uh, Department of Rehabilitation distribution, whether it be Grafton or wherever the department so decides. We're just going to hold him until we know that communication is taking place. Thank you. Now, there, there's... Uh, one other issue, and that's the OPATA certificate. So how do we surrender that? Now, we can order the Ohio Department of uh, we, can, we can order it stricken and canceled, which the court will do, and here does. And we could formally, and it's part of the deal that he, in, in this case here, that he surrender it. So, counsel, you can help him with that. Okay. And by, with a letter. It, it, there's nothing really to send back to them and you know mail mail it back like a okay. license plate or something just say he hereby surrenders pursuant to this agreement right. so he is no longer a police officer or eligible to represent himself as a police officer 
in this state or any state or territory of this country. All right, now, Council, I appreciate your patience. No, thank Maybe you, Your Honor. Thank you. Corrections thank you. or thank you. Yes, go ahead. I, I didn't, I missed you uh, discussing the joint and several liability. It seems like all of all the restitution is going toward my okay. client, and I think the I think the $5,000 is a joint and several liability uh, matter. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And, it, and it will be, and the, the other defendant, when he's sentenced later this week, he was unable to come because his attorney had a funeral, uh, Actually. a relative's funeral. But, and if they were here together, I would, would, I would tell them if they were together, is they both owe it. And if one drops dead of a heart attack tomorrow, the other owes the whole thing. And if they don't, and one pays 2500 that's great. But if the other doesn't pay anything, the, the survivor or payer is liable for the fine. They're both... They're both liable till it's paid. And if the one does pay and the other doesn't, theoretically, when he gets out, he can sue the other fellow for his half of 2500 Good luck. And then You're right, absolutely, you know, totally. Sorry. So just so the record's absolutely clear, there is joint civil liability for the $5,000 restitution. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Honor. All right, and I'll <coughs> entertain your motions on further proof regarding the ability to pay fines. There's a procedure that the Supreme Court has set out, and that would take affidavits or other proof. I don't know what what defendants have in assets. You know, some defendants have great assets that are hidden. Sometimes they hide them from their attorneys for good reason, uh, or or bad reason, whatever it might be, or and successfully. You know, I've seen drug dealers, for instance, accumulate. Property. To, to everyone's surprise, they, in other people's names, they may have, you know, a dozen or twenty, you know, real property out there and have income from them and, and assets. Yeah, so, I have, I have no Dan DeRose with 19. As the judge uh, clears up uh, what's going to happen as far as uh, trying to prove that. Uh, He's indigent here, has no income, uh, has no money. Uh, these are just some pretty routine. This has been a lengthy sentencing. The judge has decided to uh, really drag this out. Uh, bottom line, uh, officer, former officer out of East Cleveland, Alfonso Cole, is off as we see him being let out there in handcuffs. He is off to two and a half years in prison. In a bit of a surprise move, the judge did fine him $10,000 for each count of robbery, so that is a $40,000 fine on top of paying back the two victims where money was stolen, 4,850 from one victim. That is solely on coal. Uh, but then there is the other officer uh, who was involved in the uh, taking of $5,000. Uh, that will uh, have to be paid by the two of them. Uh, as the judge said, this is a bad look. It is a bad look for that department uh, who has had numerous, numerous individuals uh, indicted uh, in the past uh, year to two years. That East Cleveland Police Department is in some serious uh, bad shape uh, considering how many people have been indicted uh, and as the judge said, eroding that public trust. Uh, being robbed by a police officer is clearly not a good look. We will have a complete wrap up on the, of this and all of the day's news when we start three and a half hours of news at uh, three o'clock on Channel 19. Until then, I'm Dan DeRose. Have a good afternoon.